G'day folks and welcome to part two of the basic introduction to aquaponics video series. In this video we're going to start off talking about fish muck and filtering of the solids waste they create with a look at a couple of DIY filters you can knock together yourself to collect it from the system. We're also going to have a quick chat about how this nutrient rich muck can be utilized inside your aquaponics system as well as outside to benefit plants in your yard. From there we're going to move on to looking at two popular ways to plumb up multi grow bed aquaponics systems, looking at the water pumps used, the plumbing fittings, as well as the tools you're going to need to knock them together yourself. So that's enough rabbiting on about that. Let's dive on into a chat about filtering the solids generated by the fish. There is a few different schools of thought when it comes to filtering these small little backyard jobbies. Some people say that you need to leave all the muck in the system because that's what the plants grow on. I think you'll find there's enough suspended nutrients just in the water itself that most plants will do fine as long as you're feeding the fish well and the tanks are well stocked. One of the reasons I like to filter is because of these large root systems, as you can see, can catch a lot of muck. And as these root systems develop, those roots can entangle a lot of medium. Basically, what can happen doesn't happen all the time, but what can happen is you can't get enough water exchanged through those areas. So all these solids start to break down and without any oxygen around them, one possibility is that the bacteria start to rob oxygen from the NO3, which is the nitrate, converting it back to NO2. You can end up with a nitrite spike. And if you haven't um, taken the proper precautions, I like adding chloride to the system, you can end up with brown blood disease and killing your fish. Not only that, if it gets really bad, they can start to break down and you can release things like harmful chemicals like sulfur and whatnot into the system, which can also cause hassles, not only for plant growth, but also fish health. Now, I like to set up these small little basic canister filters in these chop and flip jobbies. The main reason being, I'll give you a brief explanation. Uh, this one here, we have a bit of pipe coming through the side. There's a uni seal, which is a rubber seal. You can buy them in my shop if you're in Australia. A little uni seal that allows the pipe to run through and runs vertical. So you have a drain on the outside, a vertical pipe on the inside. The water is picked up by the pump. The water enters through this hose that goes into the bottom. See me pointing to a small hole under my hand there. That's to stop the filter from siphoning back down into the pump or the fish tank. If the pump is turned off, just breaks the siphon. And then over the top of that hose and then around this exit pipe, we pack a whole heap of material. I like to use chaise cloth because I have a lot around. And you can also use things like bird netting. I've seen people use things like bottle caps as well to capture those solids and to filter them out. Also adds a little bit of biofiltration into the system. Once it's all packed in tight, you turn the water on. And as you can see, clean water comes out the top and then down over into that fill tube. You might be able to see this little hole here. Uh, it's bubbling a bit. That's basically allowing a little bit of water to come out, but it also stops the siphoning, as I said, if the pump turns off all that dirty water going back down the bottom. Now, this is a filter I'm about to clean. You can see it in the top right-hand corner and around the drain there. The water's nice and clean. But all you need to do is pull off this top layer and you can see the amount of crud that is captured underneath. This was after about two weeks of running, a couple of different layers, and it just gives you some idea of the amount of filth that these little basic filters can capture. And you might be able to see I've got a nut and tail jobby over there just so it's easily removable from the system. Turn the pump off, unscrew a simple fitting, take it out and give it a clean every week or so. Now, another basic filter that I like to use is a settling filter. There's a couple of different ones, or different ones around. This one here is called a radial flow settler. This is from our first system, a 40 mil pipe running into the side of the filter. And there is a stilling well in the center. The water is delivered into that stilling well and then clean water is sent out the side. This is a larger jobby, 50 gallon drum, 200 litre drum. You can see the stilling well in the center there. I just pulled the cap off of. That has got water being delivered to it from this little line that is coming in through the fish tank. It is low enough so it can go under the edge of that stilling well, up through the top of the stilling well and delivers water inside. Clean water again exits outside. So what happens is the water comes in at a certain velocity, just flowing rather fast. As soon as it exits that stilling well, because it's in a larger environment, the solid particulate starts to slow down, the velocity slows down and they can settle out on the base. And that clean water again is allowed to go to the surface and out that side. And down here, I have a little fines filter in the sump tank and it just traps any of the finer solids. So these sorts of filters work best on larger systems that are multi-bed where you have a dedicated fish tank, I found. 
Next slide. This is what it looks like in the base of a radial flow settler after a week of feed. The fish were around about 300 grams at this point in time. So they were getting a load of food. And um, this is the sort of solid particulate that you can expect. Down here, I have a little drain fitting, a lot of suspended solids just because I've drained the, reservoir, uh, the filter down to a certain position. I like to pump them out either onto a garden bed, it's what I used to do, uh, feed, this is actually under our lime tree. But what I do now is connect a um, pump and deliver them into a mineralization tank. This mineralization tank has air running through it, uh, helps to mineralize those solids and makes them plant available again. I also add in carbon sources to feed the bacteria, uh, the aerobic bacteria. And after a while, what I'll do is about a week or so, I turn it off, let the particulate settle, take off the clean water from the top and then that um, or cleanish water full of nutrients that gets directed directly into the grow bed to give them a little bit of an extra feed all those minerals that had been mineralized out of that solid waste now just quickly folks i've got some great news for you people who are really enjoying the video series picking up a couple of pointers and getting really curious about aquaponics i do have an online backyard aquaponics for beginners guide available 1995 us it includes a lot more in-depth looks at not only how you can cycle a system but a load of tutorials on building components like bell siphons solids filters a couple of them a small little ibc chop and flip system not only that but a couple of pointers on new transplants selection and common ways to keep pests and bugs from eating your veggies just to keep it all organic. Now a big bonus with the guide is you can actually ask me questions directly and get them answered a lot faster than you would if you were to leave a question down below these videos here on YouTube. As I said the guide is 1995 US and it is available via the link down in the description and another one will appear at the end of the video as well. Now, just a quick heads up, I also have an online shop that includes affiliate links for you folks that would like to buy a couple of aquaponics products that I use and also sell. And while you're there, check out the fantastic Queensland Nut Buster Nut Cracker, handmade right here in Australia. Great for mackers, walnuts, hazelnuts, and all those sort of things. But that's enough of me spruiking, trying to pay the bills. Let's get back to the aquaponics. This is what they call a single loop system, mainly because the water is traveling in one loop, coming up from the pump, going into the fish tank, the water entering the fish tank, oh, also some air stones in there, just point that out. The water is entering the fish tank and it is displacing water out this pipework here called a solids lifting outlet. It's basically got a T in the top, so a, a siphon can't occur. The water comes out, round into that radial flow settler you saw before. The solids then fall out of suspension, collect on the bottom to be taken out later. The clean water can then move out the top through a pipe and delivered directly into the grow beds, which in this case are run by uh, bell siphons, flooding and draining. And it is then delivered into the sump tank. And that's what makes it a single loop. Water's picked up again and then taken it straight out into the fish tank and the cycle just loops around. Now, this is a split flow system. This system here is very similar in that it has the same basic setup. It has a sump tank, fish tank, the settler and some grow beds. Now, the big difference is the way the water flows. The water comes up to a point where it is split. You have one lot traveling out to the fish tank or the fish side of things, the aquaculture, and the other to the hydroponics or the plant grow side of the system. Pretty much all the same as a single loop as it comes to the fish. Water comes in through the fish tank, solids are collected, and then the water is delivered back down into the sump tank. Myself and many others like to add some sort of biofiltration into that sump tank. Otherwise, basically what's going to happen is you're going to get ammonia-rich water go into the sump tank, picked up by the pump and delivered back into the fish tank. Uh, nine times out of 10, that is going to be fine, but there's always that one occasion where you have a warmer day or the pH fluctuates a bit. The ammonia can be toxic to the fish. So I like to add some sort of biofiltration in there. And if you want to learn more about that, there's other videos that explain um, the ammonia side of things or by my guide. Yeah, so this basically looks after that ammonia before it is pumped back into the fish tank. Not required in lightly stocked systems, but a lot of people like to push the limits and it can be a bit of an issue. So basically I like to put that in there. It can be as simple as a bit of netting in a slotted basket in the sump tank or you can get a little bit more involved like I have with our systems and I've set up a dedicated moving bed bioreactor. In here, basically we have the same situation as a grow bed. 
whole heap of uh, bacteria living on these little uh, pizza wheels in here, and they are um, converting that ammonia all the way through to nitrate before it moves on anywhere else in the system. That way the fish are protected. So that's one um, way the water flows. The other way, it's split off into the grow beds themselves. And here we have some valves that regulate the flow into the grow bed. They can come in handy when it comes to either isolating the grow bed. If you want to do a treatment on the system, say spray for pest or whatever, using a neem oil, which can be toxic to fish in certain ratios and crustaceans if you have them in the system. You can isolate the grow beds, basically creating a mini aquaculture system. After 48 hours, you can then reintroduce the grow beds into the loop again, and you're not going to have any issues with a toxic build up for the fish. That's one reason why I like this system. It can be isolated. Uh, it also comes in handy if you're running multiple different grow techniques, say like rafts or NFT, that require a much slower flow rate. Being able to moderate that flow rate with water directly from the pump and valves just makes it a lot easier to run than with a single loop where you've got all the water coming through at once and you're dealing with a high velocity of water or a high flow rate. And yet after that, uh, the water goes through the grow beds. It just goes down into the sump tank where it mingles again. Yeah, I hope that's helped explain the split flow system. As for the pumps that run the system, I like using the little magnetic drive pumps. They tend to be fairly power efficient these days. There's a couple of companies out there like JBAL that are running little variable speed DC units. And yeah, I found they work really well. One thing I would recommend is if you are running like I have on this fish tank here, some hose work, it uh, does pay to run a rigid solid PVC pipe as far as you can at the largest diameter the pump will allow until you're getting to your grow beds or your fish tank. You're basically going to get a better flow rate from the pump that way. This hose is a reinforced. It has a smooth bore, but there's just enough little indentation that it picks up bits and pieces along the way, which retards the flow slightly. As for plumbing supplies, as you can see, these are the little barb fittings that I use uh, here in Australia, very hard to get in the States. I'm actually going to start stocking them in the store. I've sold a few to people who are inquiring over in the States. Just makes hooking up this hose work a lot easier and a lot cheaper in some cases than buying the PVC fittings. A couple of hints if you are buying the PVC fittings here in Australia, there's a couple of mum and pop uh, wholesalers online that will save you anywhere up to about 50% on components, even after shipping, when compared to certain big box stores that we all know about. When you're buying in bulk, they have a flat shipping fee and their prices are really reduced. So probably the same in the States. If you shop around, they'll be a little bit cheaper than Lowe's and that and the like that tend to sell directly to the public. One thing I would recommend if you can, if you've got little uh, kids or a lot of people coming through your system is looking for something like a valve like this Sand King valve that has removable handles. It makes it uh, a little bit more child friendly. I have had people turn valves off on me before and cause all sorts of hassles within a system or opening valves and having the radial flow settler run continually out to the garden. Luckily the fish were saved but yeah having the handles off there does make for a um, a little bit more of a secure, more secure system. Your basic tools for the trays are just, as you can see, general handyman tools most of us will have around. Or if not, there may be a local men's shed or a tool hire, or even there's actually tool libraries in some places around that you can look up if you look up tool library and get a loan of a free tools and whatnot. Always give them a gold coin donation though if um, you are borrowing something. Uh, basic things like reciprocating saws, sabre saws, drills, hole saws for drilling out your um, bulkhead and uniseal holes, tape measures, markers, pipe cutters come in handy, utility knife, you know, everything there is pretty basic sort of fare for most people's garages or back shed. Well, that wraps up episode two of the series, folks. In part three, the final one, we'll be talking about three commonly used types of grow bed systems used in aquaponics as well as hydroponics, and also chat about aerating the system. Then we'll finish off with a chat about suitable fish for your aquaponic system, how many you can grow out in a fish tank, and what to feed them as well. And yeah, I think we'll finish off with a couple of plant suggestions while we're at it. Now, don't forget that I do have that very helpful Backyard Aquaponics for Beginners online guide available, only $19.95 US, and it's really tailored for you folks who would like a little bit more in-depth knowledge before you build your own backyard DIY aquaponic system. So I really do hope you've enjoyed part two, and I will see you in the next episode, episode number three. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.